Chapter 54 It was twilight when we entered the meadow. The sun was below the horizon, casting a gentle glow even in its physical absence. Autumn had begun its descent, turning the tips of the longest grass a golden brown, waving in the circling air. There was a spread of fall flowers, yellow willow herb and purple aster, and the air spun with drifting insects. The meadow still smelled of warmth and sunshine, as if the heat of the setting sun had yet to leave its memory. I paused at the edge of the grass, letting Bella walk ahead of me into the fading light. As her form was embraced by the landscape, I let myself be drawn back into the past, remembering the first time we had entered this field together. The first time I had hesitated just outside, riddled then with doubt and anxiety. I could still taste the memory of my fear, my apprehension, of how she would react when she saw my inhuman skin in the sun. The sting of the burning, impossible desire for her to stay with me, and the profound terror of what would happen if she didn't, if she ran. As if aware of my memories, a living ghost of the past, Bella turned when she reached the middle of the meadow, reaching out with a hand as if to beckon me, as she had the first time. Her hair blew gently in the breeze, and curious excitement and questions lit her eyes. My breath caught, as it had then, ever overwhelmed by her beauty and smile. But this time there was no fear, no insurmountable walls. There was just her, and her hand did not beckon, but instead reached for mine, waiting, confident, perhaps to pull me forward out of the past. And so I strode quickly into the openness, reaching my hand out as well, giving in to the magnetic pull until my hand was clasped in hers. What is it? she asked, her eyes searching my face. Nothing, I murmured, caressing the back of her hand with my thumb. Just you, here, in this place. I gestured around the meadow in an arc with my other hand. I know, she said quietly, looking around. Her eyes moved restlessly, as if taking in every detail, before concern seemed to flash across her face. Her gaze swept around the field one more time, and then suddenly her breath caught in her throat, and she shut her eyes in a small, anguished cry. Bella, I said in alarm. She opened her eyes, and despair was etched in her features. What's wrong? I gasped. It's all so beautiful, she said desperately. So beautiful through these eyes. I never truly saw it before. It's all so, so perfect. I studied her with confusion. She shut her eyes again, turning from me and taking a step away. This place, she whispered. The time we spent here, the beginning, I never want to forget. It all means so much to me. And I, I... She turned back, her eyes searing red with emotion. I'm so scared, Edward, of losing those memories, that everything will be replaced by these new images, so bright and pretty, but so different. My human memories. She stumbled over the word human. I want to remember this place, remember you here as I always have. You will, Bella, I said quietly. Like everything else about her transition, this cognizance was unusual. For most of us, we were too consumed by thirst when we first awoke to worry about the loss of our human past. And then, when we finally comprehended what we had lost, if we did it all, as most of my kind had no interest in looking back at their human life. 
It could be hard to extract our remembrances from the gray fog within which they had become encapsulated. We all seemed to retain the events of our last few minutes of humanity, and even the odd, older memories that our mind chose to embrace. But beyond that, it required vigilance and devotion to hold on to specific memories. She shook her head. I can feel them slipping away. Her voice was desperate, nearly inaudible. Bella, shh. I reached out, taking her hand, an ache building within me at the sight of the anguish in her eyes. But it was a blessing, really, that she was yearning to remember at such an early point. I believed it would allow her to retain many more memories than she would have otherwise. You will remember. Just keep those memories alive in your mind. Keep bringing them back, and they will stay with you. I promise. I won't let you lose them. I pulled her to me, and she came easily, allowing me to wrap myself around her. I hugged her pressing my face into her hair, inhaling her sweet scent. I'll remember for both of us, love, everything, every moment. Bella lay against me for a long moment while I stroked her back, smoothing my hand down again and again. Then she finally sighed, pulling back slightly. Sorry, she muttered. Don't be. I pulled her a couple of feet into the center and then lowered myself to the ground. Sit with me. Her expression was still slightly clouded, but she nodded and sat swiftly next to me. We were silent for a moment as she swept her hand over the top of the long grass, her eyes far away. You know... I came here once without you, she murmured absently. When you were gone. I froze, pain lancing quickly through me. Yes, I whispered. I know. She nodded, her eyes on the trees beyond the meadow. Her hand lifted, almost unconsciously and touched her chest, as if remembering a distant, lost pain. She shivered slightly, and then dropped her arm. She smiled somewhat grimly. Well, that's a time I'll be happy to forget. I felt the air pull sharply through my teeth, as guilt, familiar guilt, flooded through me. I had caused the pain she was happy to forget by abandoning her. Bella glanced at me, her expression falling immediately. Oh, Edward, she gasped. She lifted a hand to touch my face. I'm so sorry. She searched my eyes. You, you haven't forgotten. I wish you would. It doesn't matter now. I leaned into her hand, forcing a smile, knowing that I would never forget. It was as I deserved. Bella pursed her lips, like she wanted to say something else. So I bent forward and kissed her gently, putting my hands on her shoulders and lowering us until we were laying face to face in the bed of the autumn grass. Her hand reached up, and she ran her fingers through my hair my skin dancing with pleasure under her touch. Then she pulled back abruptly. We'll never get back home if we start that, she said wistfully. I grinned. I'm sure they would eventually send out a search party. Bella snorted. Oh, I'm sure Emmett would have a field day with that. I laughed and rolled onto my back looking up at the tableau of the darkening sky above me, evolving blue-gray clouds with faint stars suspended between them. Tell me more, said Bella, rolling onto her back as well. 
more? I questioned. About when I was, well, out of it, changing, after you managed not to kill Jake for the imprint. Her face darkened slightly. Ah, this was not something I was particularly anxious to discuss. The thought of Bella's still, almost lifeless body, even with her now safe beside me, was agonizingly clear. But I knew her curiosity would demand feeding, as always. Well, I cleaned you up a bit. Alice helped. I glanced at her sideways, and she smiled up at the sky. Then the others returned, and Carlyle checked your... your injuries. The memory of the sound of her spine snapping cut through my mind. Oh, Bella said quietly. She stared upward, her brow furrowed, as her other hand brushed over her stomach. Bella, I said anxiously, watching her. You shouldn't dwell on those things. It was awful enough that those memories lay crystal clear on my consciousness. She did not need to be burdened with these memories. She shrugged. I don't remember a lot of it. She looked suddenly at me, her hand still on her stomach. But I remember. I know you wouldn't stop fighting to save me, when I wasn't. I don't know how you did it, Edward. How you kept going. I pulled my eyes from her, cringing internally. I didn't want to relive or describe aloud how I felt as I watched Bella fading away from me, as I had faded with her. Finally, I rolled so that I faced her again. It was very dark, I whispered. Something sparked in her eyes. It was dark for me, too. So dark. I felt like I was losing everything, everyone, even you. Her voice caught slightly. You know what kept me going, in the end? Her hand tightened into a fist over her stomach. Renesme, I thought of Renesme. The world grew very still for a moment. I thought of her too, I said quietly. We stared at each other silently for a long moment. I thought of the incredible creature we had created together, one who not only bound us to each other, but to the earth itself, when we were threatened with a descent into endless darkness. Finally, Bella sighed, a smile lighting her eyes. Speaking of... I reached out and brushed a soft wisp of hair from her face. Time to go back? She nodded, and then suddenly grabbed my arm, pulling me up with herself, so that we faced each other on our knees. Her hands gripped the sides of my head, almost too hard. Nothing will ever separate us again, she said, her voice fierce. Not even death. The words hung, unspoken. No, I said matching her fierceness, plunging momentarily into the cold oblivion of the thought of losing her, and then re-emerging in a surge of conviction that I would never let it happen. Never. Together, she growled. Forever. Forever. So many times she had asked me for forever, and so many times I had wondered if she understood the enormity, the magnitude, of what she asked. And yet, here she was, still asking, even with eternity now in her eyes and body. Forever. She nodded her head, as if satisfied, and her hand slid off my face and took my hands, gripping them tightly between us. She kissed me hard, 
and then hurled me up to my feet before I could protest. Because watch out, you can't run and hide from me anymore. She grinned. Bella, I said, still smiling. She turned, keeping just one of my hands, and tugging me to a run into the forest. I hope she's still awake when we get there, Bella said after several seconds of running. I don't want to miss her. Her face creased with worry. I hate to leave her all night again. I smiled, pleased I could put aside that worry for her. I pulled her gently to a stop. There was one reveal Alice would just have to miss. You won't have to leave her. Bella looked at me questioningly. Alice and Esme set up an extra room in the cottage for her with a crib. We can bring her home with us. A smile flared on Bella's face. Let's go, she said anxiously, pulling me towards the house. After several moments, we passed close by a herd of elk. I half expected Bella to want to hunt them. The scent was so very strong. But her anxiety to get back to Nessie was stronger. I can't believe you told her! Alice was shrill in my head as we approached the house. I laughed as we jumped the river and came up to the lawn. Alice was standing by the back door, hands on her hips. Rosalie and Emmett emerged as we came closer. Where's Renesme? Bella asked anxiously. Upstairs with Esme, Rose said with a smile. Back so soon? Emmett drawled, looking us up and down. Why am I not surprised? Enjoying the scenery too much to do anything else? If Rose and I had been alone in that meadow, we would have... Emmett Cullen, Bella shrieked. That's it. I'm not leaving until we settle this. Ugh. Alice thought. I foresee more arm wrestling. Images of Bella and Emmett, arms clasped, filled her head. She'll win, of course. I leaned over and kissed Bella's cheek. I'll get the baby. You go to town on him. She didn't look at me as I left, glaring at Emmett as he held up his arms in a mock defensive pose. Jasper slid out of the door as I went inside. I'll make sure there isn't any permanent damage, he thought. I moved quickly through the front room and up both flights of stairs. Esme's thoughts were in my bedroom. I quietly pushed open the door. Renesme was laying on her back on my bed, asleep, arms and legs splayed out around her body copper curls darker than the golden fabric beneath her. Esme hovered, sitting on the edge of the bed. She glanced up as I entered the room. Sorry, she thought. I tried to keep her awake. I think she's only just slightly asleep. I smiled, sitting down on the bed on the other side of Nessie. Esme and I leaned over her, watching the rise and fall of her chest for several minutes. I could hear the steady, swift beat of her heart, the draw and push of sweet-scented blood through the delicate veins of her small body. Finally, Esme looked up at me. I'm so happy for you, Edward. I don't even know how to put it into words. I lifted my eyes and nodded. Esme regarded me for a moment and then she reached out with one hand and grasped my arm. I hope you know you deserve this, Edward, she thought fervently. Every happiness you deserve. My mind flashed suddenly back to the moment in the meadow with Bella, the pain I had once caused her, and the constant presence of my unchangeable mistakes. I glanced away quickly. Over the last couple of days, I had been enamored by my immediate happiness, swept up in the newfound joy of Bella's awakening, but I had not truly faced the demons beneath, layers of guilt and regret, 
believed so long or deeply held that they had become a part of the very fabric of who I was. I knew that deep at my core I still felt unworthy, as I always had, selfish, non-deserving. I was blessed with my sudden fortune, and yet it was inexplicable. Looking back, I found Esme's eyes burning into mine, and I knew she saw into me. I stared at her silently, and she took my hands in both of hers, so that they were clasped over Nessie's sleeping form. Edward, she said, her voice quiet but steady. Would you do anything that would take Renesmee away from this earth? Would you change one single thing that led her to being born? I shook my head, unable to speak. Esme reached up with one hand, running her fingers through my hair. Oh, Edward, she murmured, you always take so much on yourself, even before you met Bella. Her hand moved down to touch my shoulder. And after she came into your life, you were so much better. Her hand moved to my cheek and so much worse. You finally tried to be happy, and you despised yourself for it. You had what you wanted, but you considered it weakness, a tragedy, to finally reach out and take it. You carried so much guilt just for loving her, and so much pain for the ways you felt you hurt or endangered her. Esme leaned towards me, gripping my hands tightly, her gaze intense. Don't you see, Edward? You don't have to regret those things any more. You are absolved. Renesmee is your absolution. Everything you and Bella have done, everything that has passed, has guided you to her. She is the meaning of all of this, and neither of you would dream of changing anything that led to her birth. I stared, rapt, into her ochre eyes. She was right. The journey Bella and I had taken, both alone and together, all the decisions we had made, right or wrong, the ones that brought us terrible pain, and the ones that had brought us unsurpassed joy, had led to the creation of Renesme. I remembered the day I had stood by the river, watching the path of the water as death shadowed me thinking how it was our many individual choices that ultimately determined the course of events. I had not truly known at the time where the current was taking us, for I had always thought and feared that the love I had for Bella was an aberration, a selfish act on my part that ultimately would destroy her. And when I had impregnated her with what I had thought was certain death, this fear became utter reality, the cold, hard truth of my monstrous nature. But with the birth of Renesme, I knew Esme's words were true. Neither Bella or I would change any of the choices that had led to her existence. She was a beautiful miracle, and she never would have existed without our love. She was proof that my loving Bella, and becoming a part of her life, had never been a mistake. Esme squeezed my hands hard. No more guilt, Edward. No more regrets. It's time to let go. To just let it all go and move forward. She took my face between her hands. Be happy, Edward. It's all we've ever wanted for you. I sighed, bending forward so our foreheads met. I'll try, I promised. I wrapped my arms around her, hugging her close. I love you, she thought. Always. Me too, I whispered. She pulled away with a smile. Now why don't you bring your daughter down to her mother? I'm sure Bella's anxious to see her. I smiled. I could hear Bella and my siblings just coming into the house. Carlyle appeared in the doorway of the bedroom, smiling down at both of us. Standing up, I reached down, 
carefully sliding my hands under Renesmee's sleeping form. But as soon as I began to lift, her eyes flew open. Her hand shot up to my cheek, and her mind filled with the thought of Bella. I cradled her to me. We're going to see her right now. Esme and Carlyle followed me as I descended the stairs. As we came up to the banister, I could see Bella standing against the far wall with Alice and Jasper, looking very pleased with herself. Emmett was sulking on the couch. Apparently, Bella had challenged him to a best-of-ten arm-wrestling match, and after losing six straight times, he seemed considerably more subdued. I think she may have finally shut him up, thought Alice with a smile. I gave her a skeptical look. I found that very hard to believe. Bella glanced up, and seeing us come down the staircase, moved swiftly across the room. But before she reached us, Rose appeared in front of me at the bottom of the stairs. Do you want me to take her for a while? she asked. I paused, slightly surprised. No thanks, Rose. I've got her. She may be getting thirsty. I can feed her for you. I frowned, glancing down at Nessie. Judging from her thoughts, Esme and Carlyle had fed her while we were gone, less than an hour ago. I shook my head, looking back up at Rose. I think she's fine. Besides, Bella and I are going to take her back to the cottage now. Something flashed through Rose's eyes. Panic. Before she muted it quickly. So soon? She asked. Yes, I said quietly. Oh. Her hand rose suddenly towards Nessie, as if to touch her, before dropping it quickly by her side. She looked down, as something twisted within her. Pain new and yet achingly familiar. Her eyes lifted just for a moment to look at Nessie before she turned away swiftly, her body stiffening. She tried to mask her thoughts from me, but as she dragged her eyes from Nessie, one thought was torn from her mind. Not mine. She sighed internally. The last several days, Rose had essentially been Nessie's primary caregiver. Renesme had filled a gaping hole in her, but at the same time fired life into desires Rose had worked long to suppress. As Rose's thoughts spun away from her, I could see she feared the loss of what Nessie had brought so briefly into her existence, and the despised relegation back to only being able to look in from the outside. Bella walked up slowly, watching in surprise as Rosalie walked away without saying anything. Rose strode over to the back window, laying a hand on the glass. Emmett watched with concerned eyes from the couch, but knowing Rose as he did, did not approach her. I started to lift Nessie into Bella's arms, but she held up a hand to stop me. Her eyes were troubled watching Rose's back. She turned without speaking and walked over to where Rose stood. I followed her silently with Nessie. Rosalie? Bella reached out and touched her arm. Rose turned, trying to compose the pain on her face, embarrassment flooding her mind. She hated to expose weakness or emotion. Her eyes flickered to mine. Stop looking at me like that, she growled internally, seeing pity in my expression. Rose, said Bella, her hand still on Rosalie's arm. I've just, I've just never gotten a chance to thank you. Surprise flitted over Rose's face. For what? Bella laughed softly. For what? For so much. For supporting me for start. She glanced uncomfortably in my direction, and then back. For taking care of me. 
and Renesme. Rose nodded stiffly. Of course. And now my services are no longer required. Rose, I said gently, do you understand how much it means to us? How you've cared for our daughter the last few days? To have you provide Renesme with such love and support while we were unable to be with her. Rose blinked, her features softening slightly. We'll never be able to repay you for what you've done for her, and us. You don't have to repay me, she said quietly. Bella smiled. Renesme loves you so much. She moved her hand over and touched Nessie's cheek. I can tell. She's so lucky to have you in her life. She needs you, I said softly. And so do we. A smile played on the edges of Rose's lips. Yeah, yeah, she thought, glancing at me. But I could tell she was pleased. She reached out and laid her hand over Nessie's other cheek, so that she and Bella cradled her face together. I need her too, she thought. Nessie lifted her hand wiggling her fingers, and Rose bent forward. Nessie filled her mind with the memory of Rose brushing her hair. In the morning, said Rose. I promise. Nessie smiled, teeth sparkling. Rose straightened up, and then reached out and took Bella's hand. Come upstairs with me. I have a few of Nessie's things in my room. Bella looked pleased and followed her. I wandered slowly off with Nessie, eventually moving across the room and up the steps to my piano. I sat down, propping Nessie into a sitting position on my knee, curling in all but her index finger. Lightly holding my finger over hers, I pressed a key, and its clear tone sang, Middle C. I said, smiling down at her. Nessie glanced up at me, her eyes fascinated, and then back to the keyboard. I lifted our fingers and pressed the same note. C, I repeated. C, sang Alice from behind us, laying a hand on my shoulder. Her voice was a perfect combination of the tone more perfect than the expertly tuned piano. I glanced back over my shoulder, smiling up at her. Although she could not remember, I had always suspected Alice had been blessed with perfect pitch, even as a human. We all could carry a flawless tune, a vampire gift, I suppose. But Alice's talent was so pure. I relaxed my grip on Nessie's hand, and she pressed down the key herself. C, she thought, and she played it again. C. The tone echoed in her memory. I inhaled, feeling a swell of pride. Good girl, Renesme. I moved her hand so it lay over mine, her small fingers the faintest rose blush against my white skin. Watch this. I began to play a slow and simple tune with our fingers, singing softly. Sway to and fro in the twilight gray. This is the fairy foreshadow town. It always sails at the end of the day, just as the darkness is closing down. Nessie breathed in and her mind flooded with the memory of the song. The soft sound of my voice first singing to her, cradled in my arms, Bella's gentle breaths filling the quiet spaces around us. I sang in unison with her memory, past and present coming together. She looked up at me, simple wonder in her eyes. I smiled, 
suddenly filled with the desire to share more of this part of me with her. I'll hold her while you play, Alice thought, my hopes and intentions forming visions in her mind. She lifted Nessie from my arms, allowing the simple notes to continue uninterrupted. When my other arm was free, my fingers moved to the keyboard and began to play, adding dimension to the song. As I played, I tried to balance the melancholy tones this song brought from my past, with the intense joy of the memory of singing it to my daughter for the first time. Dear little passenger, say good night. We've reached the harbor of Shadow Town. When I finished, I glanced up. Alice shifted Nessie so she could clap her hands, and Vernesme smiled and did the same. She eyed the keyboard with speculative interest. I stood and lifted her into my arms, hugging her against me. There's so much I want to show you, I murmured. She replayed in her mind the memory of our hands moving together on the keyboard. Tomorrow. That was beautiful, whispered Bella. I glanced over to see her standing at the bottom of the stairs, rose behind her. Bella was holding a small hairbrush and a book of nursery rhymes. Rosalie clutched Nessie's blue blanket in her hands. I moved to them quickly, brushing Bella's cheek lightly. Ready to go home? I asked softly. She nodded, and we both turned to Rose. Rose held out the blue blanket slowly to Nessie, who took it in one hand and then hugged it against her body. She inhaled, thinking it smelled of Rose. Rose leaned down, pressing her cheek to Nessie's face. Good night, sweet girl, she said quietly. I love you. Emmett came up and put his arm around Rose. His eyes were on her, but he shifted his gaze back to me as she rose. Thanks, Edward, he thought. What you said to her before, what you both said, I, I know it means a lot to her. He reached out and rustled Nessie's hair. Later, kid. He glanced up at us with a grin. Keep an eye on your parents for me. Bella and I turned. The rest of my family was standing several feet behind us. Carlisle and Esme with their arms wrapped around each other's waists and Alice and Jasper next to them, holding hands. Bella reached out and took Nessie from my arms. She walked over to Esme, and I moved with her. Say goodnight to Grandma, she said. Esme inhaled, her eyes sparkling, and her hand rose briefly to touch over her heart. Then she reached out and gathered Nessie from Bella's arms. She drew her into her body, and Nessie's small arms wrapped around her neck. Esme pressed her face into the silky curls haloing Nessie's head. Good night, she murmured. I'll miss you. Lifting her head, she turned towards Carlyle. Say good night, Grandpa, she said with a smile. Carlyle grinned placing a hand on Nessie's head. See you in the morning, sweetheart. Esme handed Nessie back to Bella. She looked at me for a long moment, her eyes nostalgic. Don't forget, this is always your home, too. I smiled and nodded at her as we moved over to stand in front of Alice and Jasper. Jasper's eyes were somewhat distant, Worry creasing his expression. He was still thinking over our interaction with Charlie, still worrying about our safety and anonymity. He held out his hand somewhat solemnly, and Nessie reached out tentatively to grip one of his fingers, then slowly lifted a hand, and he leaned down so she could touch his neck. Their minds filled with the vision of Jasper earlier in the day, after the arm wrestling 
hugging Alice, his face alight with rare, unguarded happiness and contentment. Nessie turned the vision slowly, focusing on Jasper's face, his smile, and his bright eyes. Her message was clear. She liked to see Jasper like that. Jasper stood silently, soft awe breaking out over his expression. Then he bent and pressed his lips to Renesmee's forehead. Night, darling, he said, a soft southern lilt invading his voice, as it often did during times of heightened emotion. Alice bounced up and swiftly kissed Nessie on the cheek. I'll be over in the morning with your outfit. Bella looked affronted. Alice, I can dress my own child. Alice cocked her eyebrow, and her eyes moved slowly down and up over Bella's dirty jeans and shirt. Oh, fine, muttered Bella. Alice grinned. And then I'll choose your outfit. She narrowed her eyes at me. You're fired. Rolling my eyes, I took Bella's hand and moved towards the back of the house. As we passed out the door, I glanced back. No one had moved. Esme smiled and held up a hand. Alice winked. See you bright and early, she thought. 7.22 to be exact. Nessie will be awake by then. I turned and went out the door. We jogged down the hill, holding hands, Nessie's arms clinging around Bella's neck. We paused at the edge of the river. Should we jump? asked Bella. She gazed out over the water. There are a lot of trees over there. I smiled. Better than wading through the water. It would feel fine for Bella and me but Renesme might not appreciate it with her higher body temperature. Let me take her. Bella looked relieved and placed Renesme into my arms. I looked down at her. Ready? Nessie nodded vigorously. I chose a spot just on the opposite bank, a small grassy patch well before the tree line. Caging my arms protectively around Nessie's body, I vaulted off my back foot. We sliced easily through the wind, Nessie smiling and clapping, her small hands clutching my shoulders. I took the weight of my landing on the balls of my feet, careful not to jostle her. With a soft breeze, Bella appeared several feet in front of us, swinging around a high branch before landing. Nessie clapped with delight. I strode over and wrapped an arm around her waist, kissing her lips quickly. Nessie giggled with amusement, ascending silver bells. I kissed her cheek, too. My girls, I said, feeling slightly giddy. Bella rolled her eyes. Come on, silly. She pulled my arm from around her waist and grasped my hand, leading us into the forest. We simply walked for a while, passing Nessie between us. It was night now, the sun's light completely extinguished, leaving the woods bathed in lavender tones. Nessie could miraculously see nearly as clearly as us in the dark, darker purples and grays and the familiar forest suddenly seemed more fascinating through her eager eyes. Her hand reached out constantly, straining to touch and examine every new leaf and tree. We stopped patiently, letting her rub her hand over the rough bark of a conifer, or caress a fire-red leaf with her fingertips. A maple, said Bella, as Nessie touched a leaf the color of yellow sun. She turned it over slowly, eyeing it from every angle. Then she slowly drew it into her palm with her fingers, crushing it into oblivion. Vine maple, actually, I murmured. Acer circinatum. Bella groaned. Vampire or not, 
I'm never going to become such a know-it-all. I grinned at her. Oh, just give it time, my love. Nessie laid her head against Bella's chest with a sigh. Bella brushed the curls back from her face. She's getting tired. She looked up at me. Should we run? It will be a while before we reach the cottage at this rate. I laughed. I don't know. She might not like it. Remember your reaction the first time I ran with you? Oh, yeah. Bella's expression furrowed. I took Nessie from her arms. We'll start slow, I promised. Propping Nessie up slightly in my arms, I began to jog, Bella just behind me. Nessie's eyes brightened, and she smiled, her head moving back and forth, taking in the slightly blurred, speeding landscape. She squealed suddenly, and her voice was caught by the wind our passing created, swept off into the trees. As we moved faster, I concentrated carefully on our surroundings, cognizant of every branch that might scratch her skin, every particle that could get swept into her eyes or mouth. I was reminded of running with Bella when she was human. Of course, Nessie's body seemed far more resilient than Bella's ever was, but I didn't want to take a chance. Bella ran quietly behind me, and I wondered what she was thinking in her silent mind. After several minutes, I became aware that Nessie's thoughts were taking flight, traveling out of consciousness to the flowing depths of sleep. Her body shifted, weightless and relaxed, and it was only my arms that held her to me. Finally, the forest parted, and the cottage came into view. I slowed as we approached. "'We're here,' I whispered into Nessie's ear, into her sleeping mind. "'We're home.' Home. Having her here with us, I felt the truth of the word. Circumstances for our kind could change quickly, and so Nessie might live in many places in her lifetime. But I knew this would always be home, for all of us, this cottage, Forks. Bella appeared next to me, taking in Nessie's slumbering pose in my arms. She's asleep, she said, a note of disappointment in her voice. I touched her shoulder. We'll show her around in the morning, I said gently. We have time. Yes, said Bella, a quick shadow passing over her expression. The unknown. But then she smiled. Lots of time. She reached out, and I laid Nessie in her arms. Quietly, we entered the house, still unlocked from the night before. Holding Bella back with an arm, I stepped in first, inhaling deeply, searching for the scent of the dangerous or the unknown. But I detected only Bella, Nessie, and myself. Alice and Esme layered behind it, sweet citrus, lavender, and a myriad of scents mingled together. An older scent of Bella and I still lingered from the night before, and the faintest of all whiffs of my entire family. I stepped aside and let Bella pass in. She looked around for a moment, and then walked quietly to the extra room, Nessie's room. The wrought-iron crib stood against one wall, blue sheets within, pure snow-white clouds floating in random patterns. The walls were still plain white, unfinished, but someone had hung a single picture, a woman holding a child, standing on a hill, staring out over the eternal blue sea. Bella drew in a short breath, looking around. I moved next to her and placed a hand on the small of her back, and she leaned her head on my shoulder for a moment. Then she turned towards me, and I bent down and kissed Nessie's cheek. I straightened and ran a finger down her satin cheek. 
Sleep well, Angel. Bella moved further into the room and leaned slowly over the crib, carefully lowering Nessie's sleeping form onto the blue sheets. She extracted Renesmee's blanket, which was still clutched in her grasp, and laid it carefully over her lower body, tucking it under her arms. Then she put a hand on Nessie's chest, watching as it rose up and down with each measured breath. I looked at them, mother and child, the divine forms of my world. I thought of Esme's words earlier, and I knew that it had been both Renesme and Bella who had absolved me. Only a few days earlier, I had held their existence in my hands, all light and love balanced precariously on my ability to save them, and I had. But now I realized that it was they who had truly saved me, together. They saved me from loneliness and self-hate, pain and regret. Together they weaved for me a soul that I had once thought lost forever, and poured love back into the empty chalice of my heart. I wrapped my arm around Bella, cherishing her steady softness, her silent heart still beating in the echoes of my mind. Her scent whirled around me and within me, but it was her love that I inhaled with every breath that filled and animated my being. I turned and guided us towards the white blue bedroom in the back of the house, calling to us with memory and promise body and spirit. Together we moved forward. This has been Breaking Dawn from Edward's Point of View, written in part by Maggie Chambers and Nicole Twilight, read by Hollygirl757. As always, we thank the lovely Stephanie Meyer for bringing all things Twilight into our lives. Thank you, Stephanie.